Hello friends, welcome to day two of the 12 days of... If you're new here, starting on Christmas Eve, I post 12 videos for the next 12 days. If you're a channel member this year, you're gonna get a 13th day. And I'm gonna try to keep most of them short and sweet because I know everybody's coming out with so much content right now. I'm posting a Christmas day book haul is one of my favorite traditions. So we're gonna run through the 25 books that I purchased over the last two months since the last time I did a book haul. I have two stacks, things I've already read and things I haven't. I'm gonna run through the ones I've already read quicker because in this 12 days, you're going to see things like a November and December wrap up, which is gonna feature a lot of these, a quarterly wrap up, which is gonna feature a lot of these. You've already seen three December vlogs and you've already seen a Goodreads horror video. So if the brief summary I'm about to give you isn't enough, then I will link everything down below so you can learn more. Let's begin. We've got the stack that I've already read, starting with horror stuff, later by Stephen King, which is about a boy and paranormal things. He can see dead people and uh, he gets involved with the FBI. Is it the FBI? No, it's an NYPD detective who is dating his mom and her and him get in some messy situations. Next up, I have The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I always have such mixed feelings about Grady Hendrix books. Um, this one is a thrilling horror about final girls. So um, mass murders, when there is one person remaining, they're referred to as a final girl. And here we get like references to the movies that came out of these women's situations. They've been in this support group for a really long time and they have a certain amount of fame that have led to their stories being monetized, um, whether by their permission or not. And uh, it's like, referencing movies that we've all seen but they have different names in here so it's fun like figuring out what movies everyone's from like what final girls are being referenced sorry i'm trying not to shake the tripod too much but i'm sure it's a little wiggly next up i have where they wait by scott carson this is sorry my books were just stabbing me um this is about a guy he's a journalist he's moving back to his hometown and um, there's a job opportunity there where he can interview this startup tech company who has developed an app that is supposed to like impact your dreams and it gets deadly and spooky and it's fun next up another journalist returning to a hometown this is chasing the boogeyman by richard chismar he has inserted himself into this story he's the main character uh, he's moving to a town where there's a serial killer and he's just learning about it, going about his day, just like trying to figure out what all these clues are. It feels like a true crime story, which is an interesting concept. Next we have Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valenti. And this is about a marriage, a woman and a man, and they're in this very like controlled community, neighborhood. And it's got a weirdly ominous um, synopsis where the woman is like my husband is perfect and he's everything I've ever needed and I feel safe and protected and the only thing I'm not allowed to do is go in my own basement so you know that shit's gonna go down from there another short horror book I have is a dowry of blood by st Gibson and this is a reimagining of Dracula's brides told by Dracula's bride their relationship begins to get challenged because he brings some other people into it and it gets a little fun and it gets a little intense then we've got this thing between us by Gus Marino which is about a guy moving into the middle of nowhere because his his girlfriend or his wife I think she's his wife she dies um and her death has some media attention and to escape all of that and to escape his friends and his family and everybody who's trying to talk to him and ask him questions and like bother him when he's trying to grieve he is off in the middle of nowhere and then weird things start to happen next up i have cackle by rachel harrison this is another small town story we've got a woman moving to a new town and it's a weird town um there's this woman who introduces herself and everybody in the town seems 
to be scared of her but also like gives her anything that she wants and will just like appease her her name is sophie and our main character annie gets pulled into her web and like she has this big manner and she is clearly wielding some type of power and is trying to influence annie to take control of her own life and then i have near the bone by christina henry which is a story of a couple living in a little cottage in the mountains and um, the woman isn't like allowed to leave her house and she's scared of her husband and what her husband will do if he ever finds out she has left um, or that she knows that there are other people on the mountain who she's talked to who she's not allowed to and then something scary appears in the woods one day and changes the course of their lives forever Next up, I have a stack of just other things that I've read for my December videos. Hold on, losing my voice. You would have seen all four of these featured in my most anticipated books of the year video and then also in the various vlogs this month. So we have A Psalm of Storms and Silence by Roseanne A. Brown, uh, which exists in this magical world. There's kingdoms and um, cats. <laughs> sorry I couldn't think of the word and we have a princess and we have just an average guy and they each are out to kill each other in the first book which is a song of wraiths and ruin um and in this one it's just the aftermath of that like you know these two characters are still there but things have definitely changed obviously can't give it too much away because it's a sequel next up we have a snake falls to earth by Darcy Little Badger which is the story of a Lupin girl named Nina and a snake named Ollie. And he has come to earth and they begin this friendship and it's super soft and nice. And they're working together to help um, one of Ollie's friends, basically. There's a lot of other things going on. It's just like, uh, it feels like a middle grade kind of adventure story, but not too adventurous. It's just like a nice cast of characters. Um, and yeah then i have the bones of ruin by sarah raleigh which is the first book in a new fantasy series about an african tightrope walker tightrope dancer sorry she's a dancer and she cannot die that's the whole thing about the story she doesn't know where she comes from she doesn't know her family she doesn't know her history um all she knows about herself is that she cannot die she's being taken advantage of and put on display um and put into these like uh dangerous scenarios for anybody else but she can't die so then she gets uh chosen by this guy to be his like um contestant in a tournament of freaks and there's some like preparing training and then like a tournament she has a lot of love interests it's a very compelling story if you want to know all of my thoughts there's a vlog <laughs> then i have far from the light of heaven by ted a thompson and this is a space opera. It's very character focused. We have that setup of a woman who wakes up. Uh, she's the captain of like a spaceship and she wakes up and nobody else on her crew is awake. And then there was murderous things involved and she has to try to figure out what happened. There's also other people who become involved and are trying to solve the same thing. I don't know why I called it a spaceship. Is that the right word? It's called a colony ship. They are going to colonize a planet. I thought it'd be fun this year to explore what I love in sci-fi and it's been an interesting journey. Now we have my second stack which is books that I don't I don't know anything about or I know very little about I haven't read them I've had them recommended or they've just been on my radar and then a lot of them I bought secondhand or on sale so the first one I have doesn't fit into that category it's a new release okay I'll go through my new releases first oh there's only two okay I have all her little secrets by Wanda M Morris which is a fast-paced debut thriller it's about a black lawyer who gets caught in a dangerous conspiracy after the sudden death of her boss basically she gets involved in a romantic relationship with her boss and then he ends up dead and then elise gets promoted to his position and everybody is suspicious of her and we're gonna find out what really happened the other one i have is pearl by josh mallerman which is a re-release originally came out years ago called something like on this day on this year 
on this day of the pig or something like that and now it's called pearl and it's about a pig go to the farm just outside of town and you'll hear it a voice inside your head or is it a voice that makes you want to pick up that axe over in the corner of the barn and swing it and kill it's the voice of pearl i don't know i had to buy it most of these books are gonna be read in 2022 i promise Next up, since I love that Christina Henry, I picked up this Christina Henry, which is called The Ghost Tree. I feel like her books are a little like silly and over the top because like I gave this five stars and I recommend it, but it's not like the most thoughtful, like intricate type of book. It's more just a wild ride. And I think this could be fun. Uh, it says two girl's bodies are found torn apart in Smith's Hollow. And then our main character, Lauren, has visions of a monster dragging them through the woods. She knows she needs to do something to help. And that's pretty much it. Sounds fun. Another thrillery horror book I picked up is called The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldav Moldavsky. I was kind of hoping would win. We did this poll for the book club where people selected what the final pick was going to be. It ended up being The Death of Jane Lawrence. I picked this up just in case it was going to be picked and it wasn't, which is fine. But I just think it sounds really interesting and I want to give it a go uh, next year. It says the Mary Shelley Club is a secret. Everyone gets one fear test. I love that premise. You must perform the task assigned to you. You must pick your target before the test starts. You may scare everyone else in the room, but if you don't sink your eight ball, you failed the test. The game isn't over until everyone's had their turn. A member of the club may never be a target. It's like a list of rules. A fear test ends when your target screams. I just think it sounds silly and fun. And we're following a girl named Rachel who gets invited to be a part of the club. And then I guess she has to like prove her loyalty. And my last horror type book that I picked up is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas and I don't know a ton about this it's a very shiny distracting cover but I think it's about like authors who all go to this house to like be inspired for their writing I guess I should read this whole thing anyway because I might have to pitch it to you again sometime this year oh it begins as a publicity stunt and becomes a fight for survival the entity they have awakened will follow them torment them threatening to make them a part of the bloody legacy of kill creek i want to read it then i have one sci-fi book it's called autonomous by annalee newitz and it says we're in year 2144 we're following a scientist in a submarine who's become a robin hood the drug pirate and is helping people get drugs but then she leaves a trail of drug overdoses we're also following um like a a guy and his robot and they are partners and they are going to take her down so we'll see how that goes i told you i'm exploring sci-fi we just have to figure out what i like um the last four i don't actually even know what category they would be in because i don't know anything about them but before that uh, this one is five little indians by michelle good i've had this recommended to me recently so i just grabbed it when i saw it at the thrift store i believe it's about residential schools um it says taken from their families as small children and confined at a remote church-run residential school kenny lucy clara howie and Maisie are barely out of childhood when they are finally released with no money or support after years of detention oh it's set in vancouver that's probably why it was mentioned to me the paths of these five friends cross and crisscross over the decades as they struggle to overcome or at least forget the trauma they each endure during their years there okay i've already seen this in a couple people's like um favorite book lists of the year so i'm gonna give that a go and then these four i have not read the synopsis at all for i don't think part of me feels like i've hauled this before but i swear i don't know anything about it so that can't be true it's called leave the world behind by ruman alam 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 sorry when i read and review it i will get that right so we've got a family who's renting a luxurious home and then a couple shows up on their doorstep saying that they own the home and they're like in a panic and they're wondering if they should trust them to all like come together in this home there's a blackout uh this is one of the lowest rated books that i've like ever seen but the people who love it really love it 
So I think this will be a fun one to give a go. Um, I've also seen Fever Dream Everywhere uh, by Samantha Schweblin. Every time I refer to one of my favorite books as a fever dream, people recommend this to me. And I thought it was way bigger. So it's this tiny book that I think will be fun. It says it's about a young woman named Amanda lying, dying in a rural hospital clinic. Then there's a boy named David who sits beside her. She's not his mother. He's not her child. Together they tell a haunting story of broken souls, toxins, and the power and desperation of family. I still don't know what it's about, but it's so short. I'm not going to read any further. I'm just going to pick it up at some point. Another book that's way shorter than I thought it was is Piranesi. And again, maybe I've already hauled this. I It's so bad because I haul things in vlogs and then I can't remember if I've hauled them in a haul. Oh, pretty. Have I seen this before? I'm not going to read the whole thing. Just going to get a little idea of what it is. Piranesi's house. Oh, that's a person. Okay, I didn't even know that. <laughs> house is no ordinary building. Its rooms are infinite. Its corridors endless. Oh, it's like an it's like a weird house story. Okay. Its walls are lined with thousands upon thousands of statues, each one different from all the others. Within the labyrinth of halls, an ocean is imprisoned. Waves thunder up staircases, rooms are flooded in an instant, but Piranesi is not afraid. He understands the tides as he understands the pattern of the labyrinth itself. He lives to explore the house. Oh shit, okay. <laughs> that sounds very intriguing. I have different video ideas for most of these. And then lastly, I have Popishu, Popisho, Papisho. I picked it up just because of the cover. That's all I have to say. It says, somewhere far away, or maybe right nearby, lies an arch archipelago called Popisho. So it's a place. Didn't know. Thought maybe that was this guy's name. <laughs> a place of stunning beauty and incorrigible, incorrigible, in <laughs> incorrigible mischief, destiny and mystery. It's also a place in need of change. There's a guy named Xavier who's been anointed by the gods to make each resident one perfect meal when the time is right. There's a storm coming, we're on an island, there's a governor's daughter, it's a portrait of a community, a critique of the legacies of corruption and colonialism. Huh, sounds weird. I'm, I'm so down. This is gonna be an interesting time. Okay, that's it. Those are all the things that I, picked up in the last couple months leading up to Christmas. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me for this kickoff. I know it's day two, but it's the first like video, sit down video of the next 11 like, days. Anyway, thanks for being here. I'll see you tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm.